guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk and today I'm going to film my December favorites. And like always, first I'm going to start off with my favorite book. That was an awkward pause to start off with. Anyway. Along Came a Swarm by Austin Diegelman. This is kind of a special one because I've seen Austin, she's a slam poet. I've seen her perform at uh, Avant Garden here in Houston. and I think she's based out of Austin, I want to say. Anyway, so I see her quite often at uh, Avant Garden, and I thought I really want to support her. Anytime that she goes on stage, I know I'm going to love her poetry, and yeah, I, st I still love it. I'm not quite through with this, so uh, our review will be up on this very soon, but oh my gosh, I'm just kind of picking through and just reading a couple here and there, and it's just so beautiful, and I don't know, it's... This girl's got a gift, I'm telling you. One of my favorites in the book, because I'm trying to kind of keep this short and sweet because I will do an entire review on this. Um, one of my favorites, and it was the first slam that I, I heard her slam, and it is called The Family That Drinks Together. I have the hardest time describing poetry because they just, it, they provoke such an emotion and it's often very hard to uh, think of words that accurately describe it and do it justice. But let me talk about the cover of this. Do you see this? It's so simple and so pretty and Oh, I love it. Next, I'm going to talk about something of a random favorite, for sure. I don't have the entire packet of them with me, but I kind of picked out my favorites. There are these that look like these little dagger-like things. And then there are some that look like little squares, just like this. They're very dainty. And then I also have this one, which is like a little spike. And I always wear this in my cartilage because it just looks really cool just sticking out there. So yeah, I've been wearing basically those three earrings all month long and I thought, no, nah, I should mention it because it's I've actually been wearing earrings this month. I am often the lazy person that's like, I can't be bothered to put jewelry on, but I'm trying now. Now I'm going to talk about my Netflix favorites of the month and I have quite a few here. And I also have quite a few that are non-Netflix and they're just movie favorites. So I'm going to actually talk about the non-Netflix favorites first. So my friend Megan and I just happened across this movie called Only Lovers Left Alive. And then we read the synopsis, which was really funny, because it was just like this very serious description. And then at the end, they're like, oh yeah, and they're all vampires. And we we're like, uh, okay, let's watch the trailer to this, because it had such a big named cast. It had Tilda something and Tom Hiddleston, and like the list goes on. And so we watched the trailer and we kind of looked at each other and we're like, yeah, let, let's try it. There's this beautiful dark ambient music that's throughout this and then other than just kind of like that music that's almost always there in the background, they have um, actual music choices that they play on records that were just stunning. Oh my god, I just, I want the soundtrack, I want the score, I want all of it. But now I'm going to tell you a little bit of a summary and it's one of those that's definitely an independent movie and it feels like it, but it's so beautifully done and I have a really hard time describing those movies. So Adam, portrayed by Tom Hiddleston, is a depressed musician who lives in Detroit and is just really distraught by the way that human society has taken this turn. And his lover, from of many centuries at least, portrayed by Tilda Swinton, um, I don't remember where she is, somewhere in Tangia, I want to say. Anyway, they end up reuniting. This is so choppy because there's a garbage truck going up my street and randomly accelerating. I'm so sorry. It's this really beautifully paced movie. I feel like it could go on for even more hours than it did. Our two main characters are vampires and they're struggling to find clean blood. I think I might have moved the frame, damn it. That's probably my biggest pet peeve is when I end up moving the frame by mistake. But it also has this really beautiful social commentary and Megan and I were talking and um, Tom Hiddleston's character who's kind of, you know, distraught by mankind in general, um, he calls humans these zombies. And if you really think about it, it's the vampires that have to feed off of a live thing and it's the humans who are basically eating dead meat. And so it's very zombie-like and I don't know, That's Megan kind of came up with that and I was like, that is a really brilliant idea. But so there are a lot of little gems like that woven throughout the movie and the way that it was shot. The man who directed it has not directed very many movies, but I plan on watching all of them. That is how much I like the directing. The beginning, they have like this spinning thing and like from above and it's like focused on um the two main characters like going scene to scene and then it's like they drink their little tiny thing of blood and it's not like this ravenous hunger constantly kind of thing it's just like just to basically satiate th satiate them it's just it's really beautifully crafted i i'm into it most long-winded description of a movie ever goes to me i think that actually beat upstream color now on to actual netflix i have been watching supernatural yeah, it finally has happened. I've had it recommended via Netflix, via actual non-robot people. 
And I just, I haven't ever watched it because it's like so many seasons, but you know what? <laughs> like that's ever stopped me before. I really do need to start watching Sons of Anarchy again though. Do not spoil me, I swear to God. I swear, I, ooh, I will send you really bad juju through the interweb. But anyway, yes, I am actually quite enjoying Supernatural. I'm on to the second season now. I like the direction it's going more than I did the first season. So I'm thinking like I'm my like for it is growing. Everyone knows what Supernatural is. It's these two brothers that go and fight Supernatural shit. Ta-da! <laughs> but it has like a really good story arc to it. It is a little bit Monster of the Week, but there's like a good, yeah, story arc. That's the best way I can describe it. Also a short mention because I don't think anyone is interested in this like I am, but I watch HGTV. Like that is my shit. I'm still watching Property Brothers. I've also really been into Rehab Addict. I just have rewatched like two seasons. <laughs> My life has been HGTV. Now on to my music favorites. I have quite a couple different mentions, so this is definitely more variety than most of the months. So first off, I have been listening to this one particular song so often, and it, it's so weird. But not the song is weird, it's just like I have had the strangest addiction to Drops of Jupiter by Train. I don't know why. And then to kind of keep on that nostalgia train, I've been listening to the album Foiled by Blue October. It is, in my opinion, their best album. I don't like every song on most of the albums but I like every single song on this album but I really really like the sound of pulling heaven like I like the whole CD the sound of pulling heaven down hate me overweight uh everlasting friends a little cheesy but I really like it still like this that whole CD brings me back to like 2009 and I love it and now one song that is more of a you would expect Hannah to actually like this song it is boots of Spanish leather covered by the Lumineers thank you Megan for showing me this because it's my favorite version of, or like cover of this song by Bob Dylan. His voice just does it justice and it's just slow and beautiful and... Oh, stop. Your color's so pretty. You're beautiful. They love you. I promise they like you. Yeah, I know everyone likes you. You're beautiful. And then, okay, I'm gonna sound so stupid and everyone's gonna correct me, but I'm okay with that if someone actually knows how to pronounce this man's name. Tell me, because I've said it every way I could possibly think of. Um, so who's her? Who's here? Who's, who's here? Hoo-ha? Not a hoo-ha, that's something else. Anyway, um, he sings the song Take Me to Church that I think everyone and their dog knows, but I don't think that's his best song. I really don't. There are so many other songs by him that are just so brilliant and, oh, I have to find what are a couple that I've been listening to. To Be Alone, oh, oh, that's probably my favorite lyrically. Uh, yeah, lyric, that was an incomplete sentence it felt like. Um, like Real People Do is probably the one I've been listening to the most out of his album. Um, it Will Come Back, Cherry Wine, Arsonist Lullaby. Oh, there's so many brilliant ones and I really, really, really like him. I think Like Real People Do is probably the one I've been listening to the very, very most. It's just, oh, uh, I could sway to it by myself. I have swayed to it by myself in my room alone, but what else is different? I dance with myself. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, right? Right? Maybe with my cat sometimes. Don't judge me. And now on to my last two tangible items, not four, two. One of them was actually a birthday present, which I feel weird including in here because I got my birthdays on the 20th, if you didn't know. And so I feel like I haven't really been using it for that long because I'm filming this on like the 29th, I want to say. So a short little synopsis. I have a, uh, a muscle spasm in my back. So I have kind of been in bed with a heating pad uh, a long, it's been like at least two weeks, three weeks, something like that. Um, so yeah, I really screwed up my back just sleeping. Ironically, he didn't know that I hurt my back at this point when he got this, but Corey got me an aromatherapy elephant. You can heat him up or put him in the freezer and he's warm and he kind of smells like lavender and chamomile and herbs and good stuff. And we've been spooning, my spooning buddy. I have to think of a name for him and all my elephants names start with P. So I need to think of a name. So please drop some down there in the comments. I need help. I was thinking maybe Pepper because he smells spicy, maybe. Pepper might work. And then to kind of go along with my whole backstory, um, I have been using the Dr. Teal's Epsom, Epsom Salt Vapor Bath, and it's for uh, tension and fatigue. It has magnesium sulfate to help relieve muscle tension. And it smells very, very much of menthol. I kind of wish I got just the eucalyptus scent one. It smells like vapor rub, which I love that smell, but I like I don't know. I don't really smell much eucalyptus. I smell mostly menthol. Not that that's a bad thing. And this would be awesome if you have a cold or your sinuses are all nasty. Because I swear this will so open up your nasal passages. That sounded weird. Nasal passages, nasal passages. I, just, I don't know. I'm weird. I'm... Words like that make me uncomfortable. Passages. Oh! And like last month, I included my quote favorites for the month, like my poetry favorites 
in my random favorites and that's what I'm going to do again for this month because I only have three. When thinking about life, remember this. No amount of guilt can change the past. No amount of anxiety can change the future. I don't know. I, I really like it. It's a lot um, easier said than done, but I still really like the quote. It was very beautifully worded. And this, that one was from just an unknown source. This one's from Warson Shire. It's not my responsibility to be beautiful. I'm not alive for that purpose. My existence is not about how desirable you find me. And this one is from David Mitchell from Cloud Atlas. My life amounts to no more than one drop in a limitless ocean. Yet, what is any ocean but a multitude of drops? I just like that. Maybe it's a little cheesy. I don't know, it's up my alley though. So that is it for my random favorites, the last one of the year. I've been doing this for a little longer than a year. I think I started not this last November, but the year before is November. So yeah, I've been doing this for a little longer than a year. It's crazy. So be sure to check out my previous video that I have over here. My previous book talk, I should be more specific, shouldn't I? I'm also doing personal book advising, which is where I give you personal recommendations. So check that out. It's my last video. So yeah, go over there. I'll see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk. Bye!